so it's a great honor and privilege to be here. Thank you very much. And because we don't have much time, I'll, I'll get to the point. Um, uh, what I want to do is to uh, show you some recent developments, and I'll try to make it as simple as possible, uh, because I think that the, these developments are exciting uh, and so interesting because they are uh, because they are very simple. And I'm going to begin with some very naive questions. Uh, what it, and remind everybody, uh, let remind ourselves what is so unique in quantum mechanics and what is much more unique in the TSBF and why it can open to us uh, a new kind of ontology, which I find extremely exciting. Uh, let's talk about, yeah, you know, we talked today about fake news, so let's talk about uh, fake uh, histories uh, being there in quantum mechanics. We know that such fake branches of any quantum uh, evolution are part and parcel of the what people call collapse of the wave function or of, of the, effect, uh, the effect of measurement. When you send a photon to a beam splitter, then it has an equal probability to end up in one of the, uh, in one of the two detectors, and eventually it ends up in one. And the question is, what about this branch where uh, the, the, the photon did not go? Apparently, this is something which is devoid of any ontological meaning. Uh, we know that it is not the case because have we been using a Mach Zender interferometer, we would be sure that indeed even this part before the measurement, there was something there and somehow vanished. But this looks like a kind of a fake future. If that is the real future, the eventual future of the photon, this is fake. We all know that and you know, there are, I would say that nearly all, perhaps all interpretations of quantum mechanics try to make sense uh, into uh, this uh, fake part of the, the evolution. Then came the TSTF, and uh, rather than solving the problem, I would say that it has made it much worse. Because it said, why not follow the evolution backwards? And then if you do that, you get something even more absurd. You have a fake test. That is, if you follow the, the, the evolution backwards, yeah, I know, you should have also taken this into account. This is a question that Tembrose asked many years ago. but. You see, if you if you just run it backwards, if you uh, if you if you follow the state uh, vector backwards, then you get something which is absolutely absurd. It could be a wall here. This, by no means, could be the origin of, of the photon, right? We know that it is not the case. And I would like to uh, say that uh, I would like to show you something interesting. That although these two parts are devoid of any significance, you know, this detector did not click. This wall could never be the source of the photon. But here comes something surprising. Take a history in which there is a fake future to an evolution and also a fake past. And I can show you that at the place where th these two overlap, a real particle would emerge, a particle that you can find through experiments, although very delicate ones. So in order to do that, let me just go even more to the basics to to remind ourselves the difference between quantum mechanics and classical physics and then what is so unique about the TSVF. In classical physics, determinism holds. So we know that when you shoot a cannonball, you know where it, it is going to end. So much so that if you shoot it backwards from the same cannon, you can be sure that it will end up in, in, the, in, it, in its origin. So here are the two uh, characteristics of classical physics. Uh, determinism and time symmetry we, that go together. Things are radically different in quantum mechanics where you're not sure where, where the cannonball is going to, uh, to fall. And of course, you cannot be sure that if you shoot it backwards, that it will go to its origin, right? So these are the two main points where quantum mechanics differs from classical physics, lack of determinism, and of course, the time asymmetry imposed by, uh, the, uh, by me quantum measurement. And then comes TSVF and makes an interesting claim. Follow, join together these two state vectors, and then it, it, it seems that you know about the evolution in between, between the pre and post selection, much more than you thought that you, you could know, even al almost to the point that you, you are outsmarting the uncertainty principle if you combine the two evolutions backwards. 
And moreover, when you select uh, an unusual uh, or a, a rare uh, couple pair of pre and post selection, then something very, then things very interesting are happening in between. It is as if these two histories, which are ha hardly compatible, nature goes out of its way in order to give rise to some values which are odd. Uh, you can have values which are too large, too small, and sometimes even negative. Uh, this, this is how nature, so to speak, tries to stitch such two uh, incompatible evolutions. And there are some very interesting predictions, derivations of, of TSVF that uh, have been uh, derived this way. Think about what appears to be negative momentum, negative recoil of, of any measuring apparatus which tries to, to, to measure a particle in, in between such two unique uh, uh, pre and post selections. But then, we have, of course, here we encounter a, a very serious problem. TSVF talks about what happens between two measurements. So how, how, how can you tell what happens between two measurements? Here is one thing that you cannot do. You cannot do a measurement, because then it will not be between measurements, but upon another measurement. There is something very tricky here. Uh, the, 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 the prediction, or actually it is a retrodiction, is very interesting, but it's a retrodiction. It is something in the past, something that you can't, that apparently you can check. And this is how a uh, weak measurement has been invented make the coupling between a particle and measuring apparatus weak enough uh, such that it is inflicted by a lot of quantum noise. And then on, with sufficiently many uh, such measurements, you can be sure that you, you are getting the value at uh, the desired precision without paying uh, the penalty by, by uncertain principle without much disturbance. We all know that. Now let's face it, there are people who are not happy with that and who do not accept it. In the literature, you will very often find people who say that a uh, weak measurement is not that weak and what we are doing, what we are finding is actually the accumulation of noise and so on and so on. Of course, there, there have been good answers to that, but can we meet the challenge head on? Can we say, indeed, when you are making such extraordinary claims, you do need evidence to be ex extraordinary, and can we answer them and show the physics community that there is indeed a very interesting kind of physics here, uh, not necessarily based, at least not only, not exclusively, on weak measurements. And let me give you an example. This is a story how, it, in, in a few cases, this is one of the few cases in the last few years in which, indeed, the, the, uh, the, the validation of a TSVF claim has been achieved uh, in a way which is immune to all other objections against uh, weak measurement. So this is the story of the three boxes, uh, which you're all familiar with. Let a particle be superposed over three boxes under special pre and post selections, and something interesting happens. Uh, you know for sure that a particle resides in box A. You know for sure that the particle resides in box A. B, which is strange. I mean, it, it is not a probability, but you know that. But then, in order to just to, to uh, comply with conservation, you know that it was, how shall we say that? It is not that it was not in the third box, but it was there in some negative way. Uh, the, the, its, it's very presence has, has a negative si sign, and this is what the, the algebra is, is telling you. What are we going to do about that? And here, the frustration is again uh, the same frustration. You have to make a pre-selection, you have to make a post-selection, and then mathematics promises you that there was something very interesting. A particle was certainly in box A, it was certainly in box B, it was certainly in a negative, kind of negative way in box C. Now, how would you check it? Of course, this is all provided that you did not open the boxes, or you made weak measurements, and then you're prone again to all kinds of, of to, to the objections that you heard so much. But still, um, I hope that you here does not think that I am exaggerating, but you remember, I think that you can liken it to what happened when the rock <coughs> got such a strange solution of, of, the, of, of the equation, uh, something which talks, talks about a, an electron having a, a plus sign, and people did not believe him, and then they discovered the, the positron. I think that Yakir says, let's trust the mathematics, and there is some physics there, and how can we do that? So we can do weak measurement, of course, but can we 
Again, sorry for nagging, I would say that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and can we uh, validate this interesting, uh, amazing prediction, prediction in, in a way which is immune to uh, the, the objections that we know. Lo and behold, Yakir and Weidmann proposed uh, such a case in which what you do is you do not use weak measurement, but you take another particle which is superposed and uh, make it a, a probe. Uh, this is thanks to some new techniques which can help a uh, photon act like a shutter. If you use a quantum router, then when the photon goes there, it makes uh, you can be sure that a probe photon which hits that router would be reflected as if it, it it has met a, a mirror, and then they say, let's take a pre and post selection. Let, let's have a photon in three places. Before you get the post selection, take a probe photon and send it to the two boxes, the two places where it must be there with certainty. And then, if everything, if, if the, and then what is expected is that you will get the, the um, um, probe photon being. Uh, reflected from the two places, and you can tell that by the two the two particles being uh, being correlated. So this is the work of Okamoto and Takeuchi, which I find very exciting. So this is what the, they did. They sent yes, Justin. Could you step like three steps to the right so I can see? Uh, or to the there is a clicker there which you can use. Click, clicker. On the, on the just next, you see in a little pocket. No, 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 no. On the board, black. On the board. On the board, no, no, no. On, uh, the table, on the table, I'm sorry, on the table. On the table. Right. Take care. It's not. And you have to plug in the USB. At the bottom of it, slide out the USB. Yeah, not, not only that's the mouse, but that's only to push it on it. Okay, so. Okay. So this is the work of Okamoto and Takeuchi. This is the, the, uh, yes. USB. You have to plug your mouse. Just so we can actually see the screen a bit better. And there's a switch on the side that you have to flip the on. There you go. So, uh, experimental demonstration of quantum shutter closing two slits simultaneously. I like it very much. Yakir may take exception with that, but I, I would say that this is the first time that superposition has been uh, has been demonstrated not only passively in that you have to leave the two slits open but actively one shutter pushed back one probe photon from the two places we will come to that later when we saw that we were very excited because there was another derivation by that time of Yakir much more amazing and we contacted these two guys and said why don't you why don't you want to collaborate with us on the case of the disappearing and reappearing particle. And here is now, this is a variation of the three box experiment, and it goes like that. Have a particle superposed uh, between three boxes, but such that there is a possibility of tunneling or passage between box A and box B with some phase added to it, and then post-select, I mean, this is the pre-selection. Let me take you to the post-selection. Post-select for the case, which is 11% of the cases, in which you get, in, in which you, you have it in, in that desired, uh, in, in that desired post-selection, and then for three times the evolution between the, the evolution uh, between this pre and post-selection gives you three uh, predictions, which are actually, uh, which look like uh, inconsistent. At T1, it must be at box A. At, T, uh, at T2, it must be, actually, it must be in box A and box C in the same sense that Okamoto and Takeuchi uh, revealed the, the presence of a shutter in two places. At T2, it must be in uh, a box, only in box C. But then at T3, it must be, again, in box E. Remind you that there is no possibility of passage between A, B, and, and C. So, it looks like the particle is disappearing in, in, uh, at a certain moment and then reappearing at, uh, at, uh, at the uh, last moment. And here there is something cyclic. If you repeat it, then you will get it again at box A, again only at box C, and again returning to box B, and this thing repeats itself. 
Now, of course, here the challenge is greater because this is all correct provided that you did not, that you did not open the boxes. You have to get the post selection and then uh, the, 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 uh, the formalism promises you that something very interesting involving disappearance and reappearance ha has occurred. How can you do that? I, uh, now, it is important to go into the algebra, now, into the, the mathematics in order to show uh, how, how TSBF accounts for it. And let me just make a comment about the, the TSBF. TSBF is, as you know, is completely compatible with quantum mechanics, uh, with quantum theory. That is, when you give this prediction, quantum theory obliges it just like the TSBF because they are compatible. The interesting thing is that none of the TSBF predictions so far, as far as, far as I know, have been ever derived by any, by any other approach to quantum mechanics. So in this respect, TSBF is not a mere interpretation of quantum mechanics, but a, a framework in which you make surprising derivations. All of them confirmed by quantum theory, but only in retrospect. They, they have never been predicted by, by. So here is a case in which it is interesting to find out how the prediction or retrodiction was derived. And here we encounter again the negative presence of the particle, what we call a negaparticle uh, in, in box B. And then by the tunneling, when they get together, they will cancel one another. Something slightly reminiscent of, of annihilation with, with the difference that it does not give rise to, to gamma photons and that it can again emerge out of the nothingness when they part. So actually here they merge, so they, they are together, so there, there is nothing here. But then when they part again, you, you get again the particle which disappeared. There was a certain time in which it was not there in boxes A and B. And it's, it's reappeared because the uh, particle and the negative particle uh, uh, parted again. Now that is very interesting, and of course we know that weak measurements would give you that. But then people would say, "Look, for such an extraordinary claim, I don't think that the evidence is that extraordinary. How can you roll out, bearing in mind that the two-vector formalism and the one-vector formalism are completely uh, ident identical?" Uh, how, how could you rule out the possibility that what you are getting here is the accumulation of noise? So we approached the, uh, these guys, Okamoto and Takeuchi, and we ask, so here is the conceptual uh, trap. Again, how on earth do you measure a between measurement state? And moreover, three times without do doing any collapse, without spoiling it. First, we, we used Bell for the proof, and I think that is a it is a very rigorous one. Among the opponents to the TSVS, no need to mention names, there are papers, uh, th there is a person who invoked a family of histories. And what he would say is that what you have here, suppose that you, say, opened one box, uh, just opened one box and, and ruined the experiment. Uh, but then what he said is that you have a family of histories. That is, you will repeat it many times. In some of the times, you will get the particle in box A. Uh, or in box C. At other times, you will not get it there. They will be empty. At other times, you will get them again at box B. You combine them together, this family of histories, because in this case, once you get them, you increase the possibility for post selection. But then uh, what he would say, that is completely trivial. It is a collection of histories. So we use Bell and say that to invoke collection of histories, actually, this is the all along uh, account, which says that if, it, if you found it in, in that box, it has been there all along. If you did not find it there, it has been absent there all along. So we have shown, and I'm not going to go into that, that uh, this, is, uh, this is actually akin to, to hidden variables, to say that. So you can roll, roll it out. But we wanted more than that. Let's make a delayed measurement. And here, Whereas Okamoto and Takeuchi split the probe photon in space, why not split it in time? Why not give it a delay? So here was the idea. Gedanken, Gedanken, Gedanken. So ignore all, all, possibility, all technical possibilities. And here it is. And of course, it is not even, I, we are disregarding even the velocity of light in, in, in the slopes here. We said that something very interesting, I would say, thrilling is happening in these three boxes. At a certain time, you have this negative particle, which is not there. You have a particle and a mirage particle, or phantom particle, that is the, the clone of the particle, which is in the other box. And you can see that they cancel one another. It's not an annihilation. There is a very interesting physics here, and we would like to, 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 to see it. 
Okay, and, and we would like to, to probe it with, with, with the best, with the best possible, possible methods. Why not do it? So here is, here is the, the diagram. Here are boxes A and B and C. Put two mirrors behind A and B. And now take a photon and split it. And with a delay, you are now splitting it also in time. Make, make it two parts of it hit the, the system in boxes A and C and let them act like shutters such that they reflect it. These two, I would say, sixths, if I'm not mistaken, of, of the whole wave function of the probe. Then at T2, send another third, split it into two, throw them to hit the mirrors. So that it, if, if there is a photon there, it will spoil the experiment. The, the, the angle is different. So there is nothing here. And then at T3, let it hit again B and C. Now you understand, if everything is correct, then you give again the delays. See, delay, 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 then you reverse the delays, just as you're in, in ordinary interference, when you reverse the, the splits. And then you're expecting a correlation between these two, only if this prediction is correct. That is only if these two boxes hosted a photon, these two have been vacant at T2, and again, there was a photon, a shutter photon here. We published this in Nature Scientific Reports. This is the, the scheme of Okamoto and Takeuchi. The experiment is not done yet. It is, of course, very difficult, but they are doing a weak version of it. Just the, a few days ago, uh, uh, Rio told us that he, he already has results. And with that, sorry. Yeah, this, uh, this is the, the scheme, which is much more technical and much more precise. And this is a uh, Scientific American uh, uh, article about that, how spooky can uh, quantum mechanics be. And with that, let's go to our earlier question. We have a fake future here, right? This part is fake. You have a fake past, obviously fake. And here is the argument that if you have a history in which there is a fake future and fake past, you will have a particle emerging from the nothingness in this case, and you understand that this is complete, almost completely analogous to the, to the disappearing and reappearing particle in the three boxes, but now with the advantage of a um, MZI such that you can see the dynamics and how, how it goes. And then a real particle will, will appear, and this is the work that we have now sent. Uh, this is a, a paper, invited paper to, to entropy. This is Lev Weitman, and I love the, the, the twist that he gave it. He said, let's make a nested mach zender interferometer. So this is the usual interferometer, with the difference that now this beam splitter, uh, its uh, transmission coefficient is different. Two thirds go here, one third go here. Here, you have an ordinary MZI. So this BS is one half and one half, which means that it will split these two thirds into one third and one third. So, so it, there is a time similarly to the three boxes in which the photon is here, here, and there. And then you recombine them back. And then this beam splitter, BS4, is just the reverse of BS1. That is, uh, what two thirds go now here, and one third go here. Now something interesting happens. Send a photon through it. Let the photon go, go through the setting, and here is what you get. And here is the twist that, that he gave to it. Now you have another post selection. That part of the wave function, the two thirds that go here, by contractive interference, go out of the, of the larger MZI, which means that this one cl should click. If it does not click, this part, you, you have killed this part, do you agree with me? It's dead. I've, I think that everybody will say that. And then we understand that it never went here, and of course could never make it to BS4, and we conclude that there's been a collapse, and the photon went only this way, and then, because this is one third, in one ninth, one third out of the third, it goes here, and in two third, it goes here. Now, post select, for the case, for the one-ninth of the cases, 
in which it went to detector D3. Now this amounts to the post selection of this backwards evolution, which is here. It went back. Now two thirds went here. You have a fake past, right? Here is a fake past, here is a fake past. And it goes again through the nested mass and interferometer. Again, it exits through a non-existing non exit. It goes to a wall or black hole or whatever you want here. So this is completely ridiculous. So we understand that it must have, because this is the pre-selection. But now, there is an overlap between the two fakes, right? Where it goes backwards, this has been visited by this kind of history, which is fake because we killed it by this detector not clicking. So this is pre-selection, this is the post-selection, you can see the overlap. So this is what you expect. In the inner arm of the nested MZI, there has been a negative particle. Here is, you have the minus, which is what you expect now. Can a particle be where it never went? It never went here. It never emerged here, neither to this detector nor to this. But now the formalism tells you that for a brief period, there has been this clone particle before it has ca canceled. In other words, what I am arguing is that what we thought here was nothing was a pair of a clone particle with the negative particle going together, right? We have one particle, so if we have another, then we need to have another. We think, and by ordinary physics, nothing went here. It turns out that there was a particle, a negative particle, which by Lev's uh, nested mass sender have been through a temporary resolution. And now can we, can we find out, can, can we apply the er earlier technique for this case. Let me tell you that Okamoto and Takeuchi now report, not yet, these are preliminary results, that something interesting happened here. You had a negative recoil, okay? Usually when you measure the presence of particles, if you make the mirror movable, then it is supposed to recoil outside. But if in this case the momentum is negative, then of course the recoil would be paradoxical, but this is in weak measurements and it is very important for what I want to say. But now, Yes, Weidman himself made the experiment with weak measurements, but I doubt whether we can call, it, call them weak. The mirrors were, rota were, were uh, vibrating not by quantum noise, but by, by some classical method, and the beam was classical, billions of photons going through. Can we, at least Gedanken, do it at the level that we mentioned earlier with the disappearing particle? Why not? Let's repeat, it, it, it would be much more difficult, but at the Gedanken level, let's do it. Let's have a probe particle split it such that the probe particle, when it visits our, when it visits our system, it goes as follows. At T1, to the mirror, remember, indicating the, the photon's absence, placed just behind its path. Of the, pro, uh, of the nested MCI. Let me just show you what I'm talking about, okay? So let the probe photon go to a mirror here, which means that has the photon been here in this arm going to the nested? It would spoil the correlation between the probe and the shutter. Let it go now two parts of it at the same time to this path and to this path, similar to what Okamoto and Takeuchi did with, with the shutter. Let it go now again to a mirror here, in the path which the photon never went. The photon is, as, is supposed never to have went to the, uh, uh, to the nested interferometer. It is supposed never to have emerged from it, exited from it, but it is supposed to have tra tra traversed it. So this is what our uh, uh, probe photon is going to do, to indicate its presence and absence, which are self-contradictory in all these times, and then we expect bell-like correlations between these two, between these two parts, between the probe and the shutter. This is the correlation to, that we expect. So let me conclude. I, 
do you want to say something so far? I, I, I believe that I said enough. If you have questions about this setting, about this proposed setting. So let me, uh, let me tell you why I think this is so, so exciting. There is a possibility. PSBF tells you, and I, I'll, I'll make it s slightly sensational, because I don't think that there is anything similar to that in quantum mechanics, that you can reveal the presence of a particle not only in two places, as in the shutter, but you reveal its absence in the path leading to a certain place. Its presence later in that, in that segment of the path. Again, its absence at the continuation of the path. A fleeting particle apart from the particle itself. Okay? And then where the, the best explanation is, just the explanation given by, by TSBF, that there has been a particle, uh, a mirage particle, a negative particle, splitting out of the nothingness and then cancelling one another again. But this is not weak measurement. This is projective measurement. And I would love to see any other interpretation of quantum mechanics, be it guide wave, many worlds, Copenhagen, whatever. Copenhagen, of course, can explain everything, so we don't have to worry. But any other explanation to that? I, I think I better make a stop here. I, I have another part just to conclude, but I'd love to hear your comments so far about it. Questions, comments? So, in this talk, uh, should you not treat the entangled system of the probe and the particle passing through the nested interferometer as a single system, which you pre-select and post-select? Um, sure. Is that what you're doing? Sure. I mean, they are now, they have bell-like correlations in the sense that you have the freedom before you reunite the, the parts of the, of the probe photon to find out its whereabouts. And of course you know that if you detect this ray, it will turn out that it has been reflected by the mirror, not by the particle. If you detect this ray, if you choose not to reunite them, you will find it here. Once you've got the post-selection, delay it. It's a good question. And you're sure that this is what you get. You can say, I'm not going to do that. I am going to take their sum and find out that Indeed, part of the photon did fail to detect its presence here. Did detect its presence here, and again, did not find it here. So th there is a bell-like correlation between them in the sense that you can uh, choose at the last moment, either do this first or that first, and you can choose whether you want to find which way, uh, at which way it went, uh, or unite them together. So could, could this be generalized then to actually incorporate different measurement settings into the, in, and do runs where you have randomly selected uh, settings? Would that give you a more compelling result? Sure, do it many times. Okay, but in this case there is no noise, unlike weak measurements which are very important. You see, the presence of a nega particle we can you can do that with that. We refrain from doing that because this is a weak reality and no no strong measurement, not even. Uh, something delicate like that would do. So I would say that the evidence is circumstantial. How strong is it? I mean, here is a particle coming out of the nothingness of a path. Remember, once again, let me remind you what I find so amazing is that this detector killed this whole branch. It's done. Ask any physicist and he will say there is nothing here. And it turned out, turns out that you have to leave this part open don't put your finger there, don't put any detector, because something is going to come from the future. Do you have any other explanation for that? You have to let the effect, the influence, come from the post-selection. Do you know of any other experiment or any other effect in quantum mechanics or in physics which says leave a path open to future effects? I don't know. Something like that. So yes, you repeat it several times. But then, actually, this is akin to interference. Uh, the probe photon tells you that I, I remain coherent, but it has remained coherent due to a paradoxical sequence of presences and absences of the shutter. Do you have any other alternative explanation to that? I'd love to hear it. This is not a family of histories. No noise involved. And I believe that it opens a new, a, new, a new physics, a very subtle, the weak reality between 
what the, the reality that we see through quantum measurements is very strange, but it turns out that there is an underlying reality, which is even more strange, but in some way more beautiful, more symmetric, and which can explain so many oddities of the, of the quantum world. So let me only conclude. Um, negative recoil is not the only effect of uh, nega particles. Okay, here is another work with Yakio, uh, extraordinary uh, interactions between light and matter. So here is a case in which an atom other, under pre and po special pre and post selection, how it reacts to uh, to uh, the absorption of, of, an, of a photon. Rather than be being excited, it becomes ground because of this paradoxical dynamics, because it is an, a nega atom. And here is something interesting that the mirage atom, if you send an atom through an interferometer and then let it emit photons, and this is the interference pattern that you get, you get a strange indication of a mirage or sp uh, clone atom far away from them. So this is another manifestation. This is now done through weak measurements. And let me conclude with um, what, what we know, and this is why I gave this uh, title to the talk. Uh, in Yiddish, we say, if grandma had uh, uh, wheels, then she would be a wagon. Uh, the English version is, uh, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Now, this is classical physics. Wishes are not horses. Trivial, beggars cannot ride. In quantum mechanics, suffice it that a wish can be a horse. Then even if it was not a horse, the beggar is riding something. This is the interaction free measurement. Has the bomb be been there, exploded, then it would ruin the interference. But by virtue of the bomb being capable of exploding, that is enough to, to, to ruin the interference. So let me make it more delicate. Rather than placing a bomb, let's make only one mirror movable. So you understand, in some cases, because you can get, gain a witch path into information. In some cases, the mirror would be kicked, and you would say, OK, I have a witch path information about the photon, and interference would be right. But in the other half of the cases, the mirror will not move. This is fixed. But then again, it is it will suffice to ruin the interference. And the question that you want to ask, how on earth did the photon know whether it was screwed to, to the table, whether this mirror was fixed or not? It was not there. Isn't, aren't we now getting a very intuitive and beautiful explanation by the TSVF, saying that what you thought here was a nothing, was the combination of a particle and negative particle, which gave it a kick and a minus kick, just as we saw in other experiments, and which Okamoto and Takeuchi are now showing, even in this setting, in an analogous setting. If it has been a photographic plate, then remember the case of the atoms being absorbing and then unabsorbing a, a photon. So what the, the, zero, the, the zero result that you received at the detector is, once again, the combination of a, an event and an unevent, or the unoccurrence of the event. And with this, I, I conclude. I, I feel that we are strong, closing a beautiful circle here with a very intuitive, uh, beautiful uh, explanation based of, uh, on a physics which is very fine, very delicate, very symmetric, and with so many new ideas to, to, to explore. Did. And let me thank the person to whom we all owe all this and who made all this possible. Thank you, Yakir, very much. Thank you. Any questions? I'm sure Yakir has many questions. Are you looking at the analogy with Feynman diagrams, virtual particles appearing, reappearing, disappearing, or not? It is, in a sense, <coughs> slightly analogous to uh, particle antiparticle annihilation, with the difference that it, it is reversible. It does not give rise to photons. And remember that in this case, it is the mass which is negative. 
this is why I think, I mean, the, the idea of an antiparticle was radical enough, uh, okay, setting opposite charge, opposite spin. In this case, something, uh, the minus sign is assigned to its very presence, which means that you have to assign it. You can't do it to the, to the charge, so you have to do it to, to the mass. Uh, and with the possibility of the particle and negaparticle parting again. You saw it in the three boxes where it is there again, which means that where you think that there is nothing, and this is what is so beautiful about, you know, in quantum mechanics, the detector did not click, but we somehow know that this non-clicking also have an effect, that there has been such a pair, uh, but they can, some, under special uh, post-selections, part again. So it is sl somewhat similar to uh, to finance diagrams, but I think it's much more profound. You concluded that mass is negative from uh, the expectation value of projectively negative, right? Yes. Weak value. From weak value, right. Is that yeah. uh, the only conclusion? I mean, is the only possibility? No, what? The application field produced by it, it's the opposite direction. To do weak measurement of the gravitational field, the particle has a negative projection operator, then the objection field, instead of being inverse, it will go up. Yes. So if you have an under Earth experiment, you have a box of n mega particles, this box will make every mass outside fly. This, of course, is a rare experiment, but in principle, in other experiments, this was a pretty I wonder if we could engineer a setup where you have a negative particle with high probability, like the probability of getting a post selection where you would think that there's a negative particle there is high, and then you could try to do some ensemble experiment with the cavity. Yeah, a guess, a guess of negative particles, Yakil? Yakil, did, uh, did you consider that? A guess of negative particles, of gas of negative? Guess, a guess of negative particles, so guess of negative atoms. Yes, I like it, because it's and anti Okay, yes. Rather than negative, yeah. So, but if you have a box. Collective. Yeah, you can have a box in principle of N by pin post selection of N uh, anti clones, and they will behave in all respect as particles that have all the opposite properties of their father. So, if the father has a positive charge, they will have negative charge. But the robot has positive mass, and then it has negative mass. So, yeah. What yeah. about collective behavior of them, right. su uh, such as pressure, or uh, I mean, if you have a gas like that, uh, of, of such atoms, would they give rise to interesting? They don't interact with each other. Ah, okay. All, all the antithrones, yes. they belong to the same family. Mm. Like ah, ah, ah. Only affects outside. Right, right. Okay, I see. Because I see. the product of the projection operator uh, will see that. Right. So may, I ju may I only mention that? Yes, it So to, to get the gas you're talking about, you would need to change or select an ensemble of particles right. where you're getting negative right. one from each of them individually. Those can interact. Right, so very so. rare, but, but not zero. Right. Let me just say that, indeed, um, you never see these things in real time. You understand why, because then you would have violations of causality. If you are sure that the particle is in two boxes, then you open one of them, then by conservation, you can suck it to where you want and, and transmit a signal. This is why I find it very beautiful, because it is like quantum mechanics in general. It is strange, but it never obeys, uh, it, it never obeys causality, it never o obeys relativistic invariance. So here is the case. All these things you can never see in real time. I guess that have we been capable of playing with negative mass, there are some funny papers about that, that you would get all kinds of paradoxical results. So nature allows them only for very uh, brief periods, but then they give you, I think, an explanation which is very, very beautiful. Uh, let me say another thing which is important, which we said in the paper, uh, and I urge you to read the paper uh, written with, uh, with Kai. Um, this actually vindicates the, the Heisenbergian ontology uh, which Yakir is, is uh, advocating in, in the last few years. We all love the, 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 wave, the wave concept because it explains so much to us. There has been diffraction, there has been interference, and so on and so on. And now comes Yakir and says, we can come back to, to the ontology of the particle, but we have to add to it. 
uh, properties like uh, modular momentum and so on. And we have to add to it the, the army of clone particles going to other directions with the anti-clone particles. So I believe that here you have a much richer picture, uh, which we only begin to explore. Um, uh, but this is, uh, this is what I find so, so exciting in, in this emerging picture. So again, uh, there is a paper, and Kai will give it to you. It is now in, in, in review, and uh, hopefully others will follow. And you are almost welcome to, to join this, this, this new research program. ontology to explain these results, given that you did explain all this in terms of um, wave functions. Um, I got a reasonably clear enough picture, I thought, from your presentation where we have um, these two wave functions and these overlapping fake branches gives you these needle particles. What is that picture missing that requires us to go to the Heisenberg picture? Suppose you have two, two heavy things, and the need to say, is a superposition of half a probability in one, half a probability in the other, and they are closed. There is no way for a party to go from one box to the other. Later, at the later time, you find the party just on the left box. The two vectors now tell you the following. The vector from the future tells you the party was always there. The vector from the past tells you the party was in both places. To say those two things together, it's, it's contradictory. How can the party be at the same time certainly here and certainly both ways? In the Heidelberg picture, the thing tells you that the party is being already there, always there, and the fact that the initial state was the superposition tells this party that has also a definite modulo momentum, which has no local equations of motion. But the party was always there. So you don't have to say at the same time, have a party in both places and at the same time at one place. So the two vessels in that sense, although the language is consistent, it's a very strange language. Mm -hmm. And I find the Heidelberg picture much more uh, satisfactory. Okay. Maybe I can add to that. Yeah. I think one of the main virtues is that it gives you a way to think of a continuous set of trajectories that start at the pre-selection and end at the post-selection. So in the wave picture, you end up with these empty gaps where it sort of could not have gotten to the inner parameter in, in Lev's uh, setup. Mm -hmm. So one of the ideas of the, the, the clone particles is that I can, at the source, at the pre-selection, have the, the thing spit out some clones. They all propagate on different paths. They all recombine at the end. Yes. But now there's this sense of a continuous trajectory that went everywhere in the experiment. Let me add one more comment, is that uh, one of the works called the uh, Cheshire Cat Experiment shows uh, that you can strip a particle from one of its properties that you thought is, is essential to it, and when it goes through a, uh, an MZI or through an interferometer, you can show that although the particle has taken one path, the spin took an, an, the other path. And I think that this is one of the cases in which uh, the vindication was also not only through weak measurements, but there is also a strong measurement or kind of shutter measurement version to that. Uh, is it? Yeah, we have to be, we, you can check it over a long time by a strong experiment. Okay. Over a short time, just weak measurement. So the question is, how many smiles are there to strip from the particles? So uh, it can't be mass, it can't be charged, because they are part of the particle. But for other properties, indeed, you have here something very interesting. And this is, this is consistent with the Heisenberg uh, ontology, right? That yeah. the, the, the particle itself can go one way. So, and what you thought is the wave is other properties of the particle going for the, the uh, paths and giving rise to to what looks like a wave-like behavior. So I find it uh, much richer than the wave. The wave is beautiful, and I teased the Akio sometimes. I said, if you teach quantum mechanics to, to high school students, you, will not, you, you cannot skip the, the wave part, right, for explanation? And he said yes. So, uh, the, but, but I think that the, the emerging picture is having all the, all the uh, 
uh, all the advantages of the wave, but much more to it. So the evidence you say about this negative mass is this recoil of the mirror. Uh, in wake measurement, right. Yeah, so I don't know if you believe it's due to this uh, negative mass. You might expect that you have, you know, or also, you know, a repulsive gravity. So for example, if you put a this is, what you say. <coughs> this is what you feel say, that in some cases, okay, so uh, can, would you like to repeat it? That no. even, even the gravity can be, uh, that in principle, the, you can show an experiment in which such a anticlone, such a negative particle, uh, its mass w uh, will have exert an opposite gravitational effect. Yeah, also the inertial mass is negative, inertial mass. not only the gravitational mass. So, are you the so therefore, if the body moves in this direction, it has a velocity in this direction, but if it has a negative mass, it has a momentum in the opposite direction. That's why it's reflexive. It gives the opposite moment to the other one, and that's why it's pushing. I guess so you won't be able consistent to. consistent to say not only that the gravitational mass is there, but the inertia mass is also there. But can you think about an experiment in which huh? you will see? Can you think about an experiment in which you will see a negative uh, gravitational effect? Yeah, in principle, yes. I mean, suppose you have a negative particle here and a normal particle here, then what will happen? They will move together. Wow. Because the negative particle will push the, the person here, the mass here, but it, it will, they will move together without gaining any energy. Mm. So they can accelerate themselves to. By Newton's, the third, by Newton's third law, but right? It's all with, that's with reality. Yeah. Now it's a total kind of something. And probably this is why they exist only under pre and post selection because have have they been existing here they would I apologize have that I have, have to pick up my son so I have to leave now. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Um you probably should wrap up anyway if some of us are gonna try to sneak into the stuff. Correct plan. Okay. Yeah. He's already started. Yeah yeah. Alright so let's thank Avi again.